is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the De December, the June 14th Flag Day version of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We knew and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. That means send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. But, of course, I prefer the private ones. just easier for me to keep track of your request out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. A bit of a mixed bag out here. Dow's down 105. S&P's off 4. NASDAQ 100 up 61. Russell's off 6. Semis are up 17. Tranny's up 281. New York Stock Exchange off 51. Gold's down set about 18 bucks. 18.14 is the print. Silver is uh, down 34 cents at 2091. Light Sweet Crude is up uh, 23 cents, trading out at 121.18. Natural Gas is off a buck 20, trading out at 738. And 30 year Treasury is up nearly one point, trading at 13119. Lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got uh, FedEx up 28 bucks, Tesla 24, Google's up 18. Uh, to the downside, it is. Um, Booking Holdings off 28, Pool Corp down 27, Shockwave Medical off 18, Transdigium Group down 17. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's start by taking a look at the index ETFs out here. We got the uh, spies in the upper left hand corner. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern that is in play. It's made the 1 to 1 1.272. What we're watching for here is some type of bullish reversal candle that would then generate a buy the D point. The same pattern is in play for the Qs. It has attained the 1 to 1 A to B equal. Well, actually, it's, it has. It's just I see that the A, B, C, D wasn't drawn exactly correct. So let me uh, let me just change that here on the fly, see if we can get that. It's not going to be off by much, but I noticed that my system had grabbed the wrong. The wrong. Let me just make sure that's correct. That low is 317.45. This low is 3. Yeah, so this is the low here, and then it was supposed to catch the high from the trading session of, uh, what is that, uh, March the 29th. So there's the 1 to 1, A to B equals CD. Now, if, price does, if we don't see bullish reversal candles, what you can take when you take a look at these, C to D legs out here, price projections. You just the next price projection area, in this case here for the uh, da, uh, Qs, I should say, would be the 1.272 expansion. That's at the 255 level. If you take a look at the Dow Diamonds, attained the one to one already. Next price target to the downside, 295.33, unless a bullish reversal candle gets in the way. In the case of the IWM. It needs to close below 168.90. Now, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. But like the other three that, have, that took out their swing points yesterday, the uh, IWM has not done that. Doesn't mean that it won't get down to 155.71. But right now, price is dealing with a level of support on lighter volume. That level of support is 168.90. Today's volume, 15 million shares. That's going up against 52 million shares. If we take a look at what's going on underneath the covers of the S&P 500, you start with the XLK. The XLK is A to B equals CD. Next price projection level 12001. So I'll give you the numbers. 
And uh, just know that if there's a bullish reversal candle, that's your buy the D point pattern. That's just going to be a short term bottom, or potentially just a short term bottom, but you certainly want to be looking for that. In the case of the healthcare sector, the XLV, it needs to get all the way down to 115.91 in order to confirm its A, in order to uh, just get to the one to one A to B equals CD price projection. In the case of the XLF, next downside target is 29.96. In the case of the XLY, the XLY is dealing with its swing point from May the 24th out there and uh, so it hasn't uh, so so what, what I don't know is whether we're going to get a test and rejection on lighter volume of that uh, swing point so no A to B equals CD to the downside that we're going to report on there in the case of the communications sector that A to B equals CD pattern the one to one gets you down to 4870 the 1.272 expansion on the industrial sector gets you to 8681 the uh, uh, the uh, consumer staples sector well, right now it's dealing with this hammer candle this had already has it confirmed by the D point that took place on May the 20th and if our price closed below 69.58 then uh, you know the next price target is 1.6 rate at 68.76 out there we might actually redraw this A to B equals CD to the downside in fact we would if there's a close below 69.58 the healthcare uh, the, sorry, the energy sector uh, price is trading below the bottom of its profile, but it's got that little rising trend line that has acted as support. Utilities sector, next stop to the downside would be 6309, and it's A to B equals CD folklore. And if we take a look at the uh, material sector for the S&P, 7650 would be the one-to-one. -one. The real estate sector, next price target to the downside, 3613. All of those are dependent upon not forming some type of bullish reversal candle. But those are your price projections. Sticking with the A to B equals CD out there, let's go to our first question. That coming in from the Tiger's Den, I think that was from Coder, who had identified an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of Johnson & Johnson. And he's absolutely right. Let's just expand out this chart. You'll see that pattern. We can see it both on a daily and a weekly. There's the daily time frame chart. The high out there for your A point is going to be April 25th. 186.69. Your B point was the low that formed on May 19th, down at the 172.69 level. Price makes a nice move. It closes above the top of its daily profile on the trading day of May 24th. It turns out that that was the C point of the A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, price has hit the one to one level. That's at 167.74, and rightfully pointed out by Coder, he's waiting for, or she uh, is waiting for, a, a bullish reversal candle. Uh, short of that, what we should say is that price will go target the 1.272 expansion. That would get us down to the 163.93 level. That's what we're looking at when we take a look at the daily time frame. As long as we're here with Johnson & Johnson, we see the weekly is trading below the bottom of its profile. The monthly has support around 165.69. That's the center of its bullish structured profile. And if price moves below that, 160 even Steven is the number. If we take a quick peek at the eight panel a uh, multi time frame set of charts out here for Johnson & Johnson. See if there's anything else that we can see out here. 159.70 is the uh, TD9 count breakout level. We looked at that, and that's on the daily time frame. We looked at the A to B equals CD pattern. Yes, it's reached the one to one. 163.93 is the 1.272. So unless there's a bearish or bullish reversal candle, price should go target the 159.70 to 163.93 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go take a look at our next question that came in. It's the only other question that we've got. So phone lines are open, email lines are open, and uh, ping lines in the uh, Tiger's Den are open as well. Hector goes on to say, hey, Steve, happy taco two for Tuesday out there. You know what that means, folks. That means we got two requests. One is for ExxonMobil. The question is, ExxonMobil on a weekly basis has a shooting star from last week. Is this a caution, Will Robinson signal? Or in XOM, is this just doing work? To the to pre, in order to be able to proceed higher, and the other question is to take a look at the CME. Nice sign of strength yesterday. What are the charts thoughts on that? So with regard to Exxon Mobil, you're absolutely right out here. So let's start with the monthly time frame chart. You've got a TD nine count top that is going to complete this month. That suggests that we should see Exxon Mobil pull back eventually to its oscillator and change line. Currently printed at seventy four seventy seven. Now, typically, when we get a TD9 count top, potential TD9 count top on the monthly time frame, we like to see some type of topping signal on the weekly. And Hector and the fuel injector, that's Patty, picked it out. Yes, the shooting star candle from last week does have meaning because it confirmed a Rhodes Momentum indicator top. However, this is the caution sign out here. Price right now remains above the top of its profile. That's a bullish signal. And it remains above the top of its green oscillator and change line, telling us about still strong momentum to the upside. So with regard to your latter question, it's still a possibility because uh, even though we've got the bullish or the bearish signal on the weekly, it's really a neutral signal right now. Well, let's maybe let's go take a look at the daily. Hector, maybe the daily will clear it up for us. Well, it turns out the daily time frame in ExxonMobil has a TD9 count top, and price yesterday pulled right back and tested and rejected its breakout level. And that's at 95.30. And breaking up is hard to do. But if we do see a close blow, 95.30, two consecutive closes out there, Hector and Patty, that says that ExxonMobil is headed lower. That'll likely take that uh, price uh, and get it below the green oscillator and change line for the weekly. And then that would set up a move perhaps down to 89.98. That is the top of that weekly profile. Uh, the 95-minute chart, a TD9 count top. Um, nothing else really to report there. So I don't know. The, the, the answer to your question is... It, it absolutely has meaning. The question is, is this a top of significance out there? 
And I think if we see a close blow, again, two consecutive close blow, 95-30, I know that I already said that once. I'm going to say it again. That would then signal a move lower out there, potentially with price getting back to that monthly oscillator and change line in the 74-78 level. So, Hector, thanks for writing in. I know you had a twofer, so we're going to get to that as well. And that's for the CME. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get that uh, powered up on our black background charts while the white ones here are... Um, are doing its thing. Uh, for some reason, it's taken a bit longer than normal on the uh, multi time frame charts, but that's okay. We will just <clears throat> muddle on through it. So, with regard to the CME, Hector identified a, a sign of strength yesterday. And yeah, you had volume to the upside. This looks very much like the uh, gold chart from Friday, Hector. And that's this. You had a move higher with some accelerated volume. The price ran right into the top of its daily profile out there. The daily profile is 206.45. So does that mean anything? We're going to wait for the other charts to populate because then that'll tell us whether or not there was a bottoming pattern uh, down at the lows on May 19th or what's going on in the weekly base right now with price consolidating with inside its uh, weekly profile out there and price trading below the monthly profile for the CME group. Your question was just simply nice sign of strength yesterday. What are the thoughts? So our thoughts are, yeah, it was nice. But it hasn't turned into anything because all it was was a move up to the resistance zone. So let's go take a look, take a look at those white background charts, see if there's any additional assistance that Hector and Patty and I can glean from it. On a monthly basis, you've got a confirmed road momentum indicator top. Price is below that profile. That suggests a move back to 149.30. But on those black background charts, you saw a rising trend line, so there is some support. The weekly time frame that had a Rhodes momentum indicator top and price moved all the way back to its breakout level of support. And that's at 191.61. So that's a key level to be watching. If you were to get two consecutive closes below that, that says it heads lower. Lower would be the 149.30 area. That's coming from the monthly breakout level. In the case of the uh, daily time frame out here, what the CME has done is what? So I don't have, maybe there was an A to B equal C. Let me just expand this out on the daily. Is there an easy A to B equal CD? So there's definitely an A to B equal CD. It's kind of like a one to pi out there expansion. Now there, I guess there's another one out here. Let me let me just, uh, folks, I'm going to do this off screen on my black background chart out here. It's just much easier for me to be able to draw those patterns in and I get really specific out here. So I'm just looking for the uh, second A to B equals CD. The second one is where the uh, B point is May or April 26 out there. And then it just was like a one hit wonder. The next day was the C point. Yeah, so you've got the one to one and now you've got a uh, Three River Morningstar pattern out here that confirm oh and you have wave number seven letter g so on a daily basis hector there were two bottoming patterns out there wave number seven and a buy the d point pattern and price just running up into resistance so what we don't know is um so today's pullback as an example yesterday price moves higher does it with volume of about uh, two point uh I'll tell you exactly what it was i just couldn't read it 2.9 million Today, through four hours of trading, you're pulling back with 1.2 million shares. So are you trying to get into this, Hector? And if you are, what I would do is I put my order in right at about the bottom of that daily profile, 194.84. And you can certainly take a shot at it. Uh, and that's based upon, you know, the TD9 count breakout level of support holding on the weekly basis, the two bottoming signals that you have on the daily time frame. But know that, you know, it's been uh, tough sledding getting through 206.45, the top of that daily profile. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and have a uh, terrific Taco Tuesday yourself out there. Any other questions? Uh, I don't see anything that have come in by email. Um Let's see here. Any questions? Any questions? I don't see anything. So one question should be, where did I put that chart? So one question should be, hey, Steve, on any kind of a bounce, how are we going to know if the bounce has any kind of sustained strength? And that's a great question. Does anybody out there have that question? Would anybody like to know the answer to that question? I know I'd like to know the answer to that question. And one of the ways that I do that is I go through all kinds of time frames looking for this. Let me first, so, well, first I got to get to the right screen. So, well, actually, 
Hey, actually, this is this is actually a good segue into it. So, Jay, you know what? You know, I say life happens for us, not to us. Turns out that it does. Here we've got the ES mini charts out here on the daily time frame. We've already covered the A to B equals CD to the downside. Intraday, what's going on? Well, there's a TD nine count bottom that is held. It was tested earlier today. Uh, that's on the five hour time frame chart. If price were to close on a five hour basis, that means at two p.m. Then that means at the close. Then it means at eleven p.m. Then that means at four a.m. Then it means at nine a.m. Then it means again at two p.m. So you kind of have the five hour segment out here. Uh, so you do have a TD nine count on the longer term time frame. Does suggest a uh, bounce is warranted. Uh, you've got a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom trying to form and confirm on the 120 minute chart. If we take a look at some of these intraday charts out here for the ES Mini, we see that it's attempting to form a rally. That will lead us into that question, how will we know if the rally is going to be sustained or not? We'll answer that question as soon as we get back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow off 95, S&P's down 2, NASDAQ 100 is up 78, Russell's up 4, semis are up 24. So the question I posed uh, before we went into the break is how will we know if a rally is likely to be sustained or not? And so uh, we talk about, or I share with you, the TD9 count tool out there, and it has a number of different uh, elements that assist us with our trading. 
One of those is being able to identify support and resistance. I have turned the support lines off. And what is on here, these green horizontal lines are the resistance levels. Those are established by the TD9 count. Now, I can't teach you the TD9 count during the radio show, but if you'd like to learn that, then you just subscribe to Mastering Probability. You do it for at least 29 days. It doesn't cost you anything, and you'll know the pattern. You'll be able to use this. So what I do, now I've automated you know, all, most of my tools out here, uh, so that way I can do a show efficiently. And what I do during the day is try to pose questions even to myself out here, like, how is Stevie going to to know so that I can share that with subscribers so I can share that with the listening audience out here and this is a 10 minute time frame chart so I was actually kind of amazed but this is kind of cool that it's it doesn't really matter what time frame and what I do is I go through all kinds of time frames you might say well what do you mean all kinds of time frames out there well the ones that I will typically might look at like on a short term base might be 4, 5, 10, 15, 30, 45 minutes, 60, 65 uh, you know the 90 the so you know the, the time frames that I might use out here Turns out, and then what I'll do is I can go through and just simply go through each of those different time frames. What I'm looking for, I'm looking to see where resistance has held, where resistance has not failed on any rally attempts out there. Well, if we take a look at the 10 minute time frame chart out here, this takes us back into June 9th. We're now at June the uh, 14th, right? So since June 9th out here, we have not seen any rally close above a TD9 count breakdown level out there. We got kind of close back here at 3819. Uh, that was in uh, on June the 13th, but price did not close above that level. In fact, what happened was it created another TD9 count pattern that simply took price lower. So this is how I would determine that the rally is something more than just a that that rally is likely to be sustained. Now, sustained could mean just up to the next level of resistance out here. So in the case of the ES Mini, the first level that's got to fail is 3783.50. Above that is 3793. Above that is 3819. Above that is 3839. So this is the ES Mini. Let's take a look at the NQ because the uh, NASDAQ is the indice and the semis that are leading the charge higher. Uh, so let's put up the NQ, the September contract for the NQ and see if it's approaching or maybe it's surpassed one of these TD9 count breakdown areas. And the answer is it has not. So here, this is a little bit easier than the ES Mini. Again, we can see on a 10 minute basis, we do not see any TD9 count breakdown levels failing. They've all in essence acted as resistance or price has not even made it up to that resistance level. In the case of the NQ out here, that first level that you would be watching is 11,480. If we see a close above two consecutive closes, not hard to do on a 10 minute chart, by the way. If you do see two consecutive closes above that, then the NQ's next target should become 11,695.75 and above that, 11,892 out there. And, and we can keep this NQ, we can cycle through different times. If I put a 30 minute chart up here, let's do that. 30 minute chart, we're gonna also see that we haven't seen any failures since the uh, highs here in the uh, June of the uh, June 8th in this case here. Uh, so that would be 11,520. But I think it's a 10 minute chart that's going to give us our answer sooner than later. If I put this on a longer term time frame, I don't know. We could choose what we want to choose. Let's choose a 120 minute chart out there. You know, so this gives us in an instant the key levels of resistance. You can see back here in the NQ. There was a TD9 count resistance level that formed back at about 4 o'clock in the morning on April the 26th. And each time price got up to that level, it was rejected. So that's how these lines work out here. And we'll still go with the 10-minute time frame uh, that uh, is going to give us the initial answer as to whether or not price is going to continue to move higher. If we don't get above 11,480, likely says we're going. the selling pressure is going to be sustained and we're going to continue to move lower. And we can do this with all sorts of instruments out here. Let's take a look at the gold contract. The gold contract has been getting the schnot kicked out of it. So let's go see what the schnot looks like on a 10 minute basis with regard to its TD9 count breakdown areas. Don't know what's going to pop up. Well, turns out the 10 minute is pretty good here. Now that 10 minute profile is at the, or the, or the resistance levels up at 1831.90. Looks like that was dealt with uh, yesterday at about uh, again, the 14th at about three o'clock in the morning out there. You had a 10 minute TD9 count, took price right up to the breakdown resistance level of 1831.90. So that's gonna be a real key level. 
There may be on a 10-minute basis, maybe a new pattern that forms out there, but we don't have that as we speak right now. So a very cool tool and assist us in many ways, um, and this way here, helping us to try to understand whether the rally is just some type of relief or maybe it's a plop, plop, fizz, fizz, and it's going to be a relief for more than just a 10-minute uh, uh, basis out there. Let's take a, a quick uh, look, see if there's any requests that have come in, and voila, there is. So let's go to that. And uh, let's uh, first get out of here, and let's pull this over, and let's see, what is the uh, question? It's for Verizon. So let's get to those white background multi time frame charts. Ticker symbol there is VZ in case you're trying to follow along at home and uh, see uh, what you've come up with as, uh, as with regard to either support resistance or what the instrument itself is doing. This question is coming in from uh, Duncan, Steve. And the question is, can you see the, what the heck happened there? God, I hate this Apple software on, on this phone. Mm. Okay, this one coming in from the Gulf, uh, Duncan Steve. Can you see the future for Verizon? Well, I don't know if we can see the future, but we can see exactly what it's doing right now and where it is likely headed to. And we'll just simply use our assortment of tools out there. So Verizon here is populating. What we know so far is that uh, price is trading below its red oscillator and change line, which was tested and rejected on a monthly basis back in April. So that's not, that's a bearish signal. That bearish signal suggests that price might be targeting 43.79. That's the monthly TD9 count breakout level. On a weekly basis, you've got a confirmed Rogemontum indicator top out here. But price is back below that red oscillator and change line on a weekly basis. Now, maybe on Friday, it uh, closes back above that, as it did last week and the week before and the week before that. And that level is about 49.88 out there. If price can close back above it, then the suggestion uh, to us, Duncan, is that price should then go target 52.18, 53.10, perhaps 54.47. But your real resistance out here at Verizon on a weekly basis is going to be 55.50. If you close above that, then on a weekly basis, you've got a change in trend signal. The daily time frame for Verizon tells us what? Tells us that we've got a TD9 count top that formed on May 26th and that is held. Price is below the bottom of its daily profile, below its oscillator and change line. The future, Golf uh, Duncan Steve, uh, looks like price wants to head to 47.76. That's on the daily time frame. So 47.76, that's really supported by the monthly, by the weekly. And if you're asking me to look into the future, 47.76 with 48.86 being a potential rest area out there. Now, as I look at the intraday charts, the intraday charts say, hey, Stevo, don't ignore me. So I'm not going to. The 50-minute time frame chart has Roach Mentum Indicator bottom. That's the very bottom right. Close about 49.55, says the rally extends itself. TD9 count on the 65-minute chart out there suggests price goes to target 49.77. The 130-minute chart out there has formed a TD9 count bottom. That says a move up to about the 50.62 level. So there may be a pause in moving lower while the intraday charts want to work off a little bit of perhaps its oversold condition. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's down 183, S&P's off 14, NASDAQ up 36, and the Russell's off 11 points out there. Let's go to our next question. It's the only question that we've got in right now, and it's to take a look at ticker symbol ICD. ICD is the Independence Contract Drilling, Inc. Now, when I take a look at this chart here, it almost looks like this might have been a shell reverse merger, something along those lines out here, because really no volume. This take, the chart takes me back to 2014 when this was trading up in the 200 area, 230, 240, 250 range. Right now it's trading at $3.62. So you can see that it's kind of a pity party type of a stock out there, uh, Lee. Um, you know, so I just wanted to make sure that you went back far enough to take a look at this to just realize, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that are perhaps underwater. What has this been doing? It looks like there's a ton of either accumulation perhaps going on because a lot of low volume uh, hasn't really had much of a uh, move out here. Now, when I say much of a move, it's traded up to a high of five dollars and 21 cents. Did that in January of 2021. No, I take that back, 797, February of 2021 out there. That level was hit um, on uh, March. This is the monthly chart we're looking at. Got up to 740. So you've got some stiff resistance overhead out here. But let's go take a look at the white background chart, see if there's anything that we might be able to identify for you. But the monthly chart, not providing us with, well, it provides us with a ton of information, part, part of which is a danger, danger. One for 20 reverse split back on 312. 20 out there uh so 312 20 let me see here 312 20 yeah but it still does what you know what i'm looking at here duffmeister is look at all this low volume this is monthly we're looking at a couple hundred thousand shares fifty thousand shares um you know did this really open up and maybe it did you know with that light volume um you know in the 240 range out there i don't know Looks suspect to me. But it doesn't matter whether that's suspect or not. It is something to consider. On a weekly time frame chart, we'll look at the white background charts out here for LCD, ICD, ICD, by the way. So we can understand now, uh, each time that price was making that move higher, was running into TD9 count breakdown resistance. That's $5.52 out there. So that's helpful. On a daily time frame, there any kind of a bottom signal out here that Lee can hang his hat on? And the answer is no. Nothing that I see. Now, if you're asking me where is price likely headed to, um, well, its bullish structure profile would be a logical area with price below its red oscillator and change line. That's a bearish um, message to us. So support is about 328 to 340. If price closes below 328, likely going to run down to 264. So I don't know if there's really much else that I can provide to you out here. I say best of luck 
uh, as I would with anybody putting on a trade on anything. But in this case here, uh, be very careful. Uh, I'd really investigate this uh, stock, and maybe you've done so. But technically, I don't know, it'd be kind of a buy signal. But with regard to support, it should be between 328 and 340. So, LB, thanks much for writing in. We've got a question here from Mimi. Mimi wants to take a look at uh, ERF. So uh, let's go get that rolling here on these charts. And, and we'll go back to the black background. First, ERF is drum roll Johnny. And it is uh, Enter Plus Corporation. Trade out at 1637. We're going to change screens out here. Oh, I see I've got a couple of private pings. We'll get to those momentarily. And if we take a look at this, price is trading above the top of its daily, above the top of its weekly, and above the top of its monthly profile. So we can say that Enter Plus Corporation out here looks pretty darn good. Um, I need my other charts here to populate. Come on. Don't be – why are you spending so much time? Pulling together all that data. And I'm going to have to figure it out. This really should not be taking this long here. So I have very few applications open. Hoping that it was going to make this part of the project easy. So on a monthly basis, Mimi, price completed a TD9 count pattern last month. And that says that a close above last month's high. Last month's high was 1550. This tells you a strong momentum move to the upside on the larger time frame. So much so that the next target would be up in the $25 area. On a weekly basis, you have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that has been triggered, but no bearish reversal candle. And price is above the top of its profile, its green oscillator and change line. Uh, this is still bullish on the weekly time frame. The daily time frame does show price that is above the top of its daily profile, but below the green oscillator and change line out here. Do we have a, a top? Well, yesterday's gap down. Let's open up this chart here. The thing is, I don't think it actually completed the A to B equals CD, but I'm going to do this off screen here just to see if it did. And I'll use a uh, I'll use a conservative A to B equals CD pattern. It looks like it may have may have completed that. In fact, it has. So you've got with yesterday's gap to the downside, our signal on a daily basis becomes neutral. So you've got a, uh, a sell the D point pattern. And, and now that sell the D point pattern, maybe what I was using, I was using the low out here from December 20th. That was my A point. My B point was up here, made a high in March the 7th. And then the C point was probably this low right here on May the uh, 10th out there. And that gave us a, a one to basically a little bit over a one to one uh, price extension is what it had done, has done out there. So I uh, watch the top of that daily profile at 16, 19, I believe it is. Let me make sure. 16, yeah, 16, 19 is the number. If price closes below that, then you could see a pullback to the 15 to 1540 level. So longer term, things look good. Shorter term, this might give you a bit more of a pullback, but we don't know just yet. Right now, the daily time frame signal is neutral. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for taking the time to write in. Nancy writes in, and Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. So let me get that uh, fired up here. And Nancy's asking for support and resistance and uh, says it's having a small bounce today. So we're going to get the charts here for Apple fired up. AAPL is a ticker symbol. And on a daily basis, price is trading below support. So support out there, old support now becomes resistance, the bottom of its daily profile. And that's at 136.04. Price is also trading below the bottom of its weekly profile. Old support becoming new resistance. 136.50 is that number. Price is trading below the monthly profile out there. So no support. Of course, the month is not over, uh, but that support level is 140.48. Now, in the case of Apple, what is going to occur on a weekly basis is you are going to get a TD nine count pattern. That says that a TD nine count bottom should complete between this week and next week. This week is bar number nine. Next week would be the bar following bar number nine. And that could form, uh, that could take price back to its next breakout level, which is 127.07. The monthly chart says, hey, I want to get down and spike the ball at the 123.13 level. That's its breakout area. So both the, so they've got a nice TD9 count bottom that should complete uh, by next week uh, for Apple out there. And what, ideally what you would see is price holding support on the monthly basis along with some kind of bottoming signal on the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, what do we have out here? Not much, really. 
Um, you might have a wave number seven, but more likely it is a uh, more likely it's just wave number C, number three out there. So on the daily time frame, yeah, you're getting a little bit of a bounce dance, but um, I think you need more than what's going on here. On the short-term time frame charts, though, let's take a look at those. What do we see? What we don't see the answer here on the short-term time frame is any kind of resistance failing. 133.97 is the 30-minute top of its profile. 133.61 is the 65-minute top of its profile. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We'll take a look at Twilio out here, ticker symbol TWLO. That formed a TD9 count bottom. Last month, it completed the pattern. Price is trading below that low. Uh, it may find support, even though it's trading below that low, may find support at 79 and a quarter or 69.96. We don't like that it's trading below that low, but the month is still young out here. Perhaps it's going to reject that. On a weekly basis, you had formed, or this had formed, a nice roads momentum indicator signal. It did that on May 13th when it formed a hammer candle. That low is 87.67. We're trading below right now. But this is going to go on to perhaps form a TD9 count bottom for its weekly time frame, complete that pattern this week. So Twilio is definitely trying to form a bottom. The daily time frame had a roads momentum indicator signal and generated that pattern on May the 12th. Price closed below that yesterday. So that signal 
needs to be reconfirmed with another bullish reversal candle out there. So the question was, do we see an entry price? And the answer is we don't out here. Um, we don't. I would wait for a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame as long as the Rhodes momentum indicator signal is present. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. We're going to finish off the show by taking a look at uh, Tesla. I want to have a chance to get the white background charts up to look at that, but we can most certainly look at the black background charts. With regard to Tesla, TSLA is a ticker symbol. We can see on a daily basis that price is pulled back to a key level of support. That is the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. So this is trading into a swing point from May 24th. The volume there was about 30 million. You're trading into a 24 million, but right into support. And support is 634.96. The low today is 635.21. So price is traded to that support level. If you did get a close below 634.96, uh, that could spell trouble for you. You'd also be below the bottom of the weekly profile. And that would that, that trouble might only lead to a price point of 616.63. That's the bottom of the uh, monthly profile for Tesla. You close below that, uh, then we're headed lower. And uh, that would be Tesla. And that headed lower could be 100 and I know it's hard to believe. But 170 bucks is what pops up on my screen. Hey, folks, stay tuned. You got two more great hours left. I'll see you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday.